most bizarre and probably one of the most chaotic times in Israel's history was in the book of the, book of the Judges. I mean, just some of the most unusual things happened. And the Bible sums up why that was in the last verse of the book. In Judges chapter 21 and verse 25, it says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And I tell you, I see that going on in our country today. We're living in a time where the truth of Scripture has to take a back seat to the trends of society. We're talk I'm talking about a time where even many preachers get their beliefs and their practices and their opinions from polls on social media instead of the power of the sacred manuscript of God's Word. We're living in a time when people do whatever feels good, whatever's right in their own eyes. It said there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And, you know, for the first 200 years or so of our nation's history, there was a king in Israel. It was this old King James Bible. And I know there was exceptions, but generally... People acknowledged that was God's word. If God said it, they acknowledged we ought to be doing it. And if they just decided not to do it, they realized it was rebellion. But now we're living in a time where it's just whatever people feel like doing, they just do it. And they'll try to bring the word of God around to fit whatever they want to do. And they become a king and a God unto themselves. I'm thinking now of a man that was my favorite preacher, at least one of my favorite preachers when I was a teenager. He was a nationally known preacher, had a national ministry, and he decided he was going to go a different direction. And he made a statement to my brother-in-law who had him scheduled to preach until he found out what was going on. He made this, and by now his ministry is unrecognizable. It's just a heartbreaking thing to see. But he made this statement. He said, the world is always changing, and unless we change with it, then we're going to be left behind. And he wasn't talking about technology. I thank God I didn't have to come to hitch up the horse today in a horse and buggy. I'm glad I got to come in a car. I like being able to flip a, a light switch and be able to not have to strain to see my Bible by coal oil lamp. But that's not what he was talking about. He was talking about uh, trends. He was talking about culture. And he was saying if we don't change to adopt the things, basically become like the world to reach the world. The big buzzword, culturally relevant. That's what he was talking about. And it's true, the world is always changing. But there's somebody a lot greater than the world. And the one who made the world said, I am the Lord, I change not. So we've got a choice today. We can either move forward with the world and stay with the world and leave God behind, or we can stay back here with God and with this book and let the world move on without us. I don't know about you, but as a millennial today, I'm just going to stay with God. And I don't care about what, which way the world's going. Hey, they can go all they want to. The world's going to hell is where the world's going. I want to stay with the Lord. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse number 12 describes our generation. Guys my age and younger, it says there's a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Boy, they're right. Their nose is in the air so high they drown if it started raining. I mean, man, they think they got it figured out, and everybody that won't, uh, won't agree with them, everybody that wants to hold to the old-time way, everybody that wants to stay with Bible standards and Bible principles, they'll stay away from us like we got the coronavirus. I mean, man, they just don't want to have any part of it. But the truth of the matter is, and just like Brother Johnson said, I mean, they say, man, we're under grace. We're not under the law. We're under grace. And we are under grace. Thank God so much that we're saved by the amazing grace of God. But it's that grace that brings salvation, that teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly love and that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. 